Hi gals and ghouls, it is spooky time. Happy Halloween almost. I'm gonna be talking about something pretty scary today, which is domestic violence because it's Domestic Violence Awareness Month. And it's important for everybody to understand who's at risk and behaviors in a partner that could indicate you are at higher risk of domestic violence. So let's get to it. <laughs> One in four women and one in nine men experience severe physical abuse by an intimate partner. So pay attention, it's important. <laughs> so while I'm gonna be doing this today, I'm gonna be doing a Halloween look. So this should be interesting because if you've been here before, you know I'm not a makeup artist, so. Also, I did practice this look and it ended up looking like the dollar store version of the picture that was chosen. So hopefully this time will go better, all right? But cut me some slack. Okay, also some disclosure here. Some of you know that I'm a bit of a clown, okay? <laughs> but I'm not by any stretch of the imagination making light of this subject because it's very serious, okay? Now, this picture that was chosen was pretty white, so you guys know that I'm mixed. There's only so white I can get, but I'ma try. But anyway, who's most at risk to be domestic violence victims? Those at the highest risk are women who have been displaced who might be immigrants or refugees, those living in high conflict areas, women with disabilities, indigenous women are at high risk, people with low self-esteem, a sense of low self-worth are also at risk of being in these situations because they believe that they deserve it on some level. It's not uncommon for people to repeat patterns of their experiences in childhood and adolescence in their relationships. So children who witnessed or were exposed to domestic violence are at high risk when they get older to find themselves in situations that reflect what they went through as children or they've had a history of it from previous relationships. Okay, so if that's you, you're at high risk, so pay attention, okay? Another thing, people who are emotionally dependent on another person because they are isolated or they have little support. Number one thing abusers try to do is isolate you because if you don't have anybody around telling you something's not okay or maybe aware of what's going on, then you're likely to get stuck in it. Something to keep in mind. Even though you might be aware of some of the risk, sometimes people are in situations that you just don't catch, that you're just not aware of. Just because someone portrays their relationship as healthy and happy and all the good things doesn't mean something isn't happening. And victims can feel like they have to protect the abuser. Victims may not come forward because they're embarrassed. So, and a lot of them are in denial about what's happening. But do not blame the victim. That's not my point. My point is that you might not be aware of what's going on because that victim is under the control of the abuser. It may not solely be because they're afraid of what will happen to them, but what could happen to their friends or family or children. So it's not as easy as one might think to try to escape. Now, before I move on to discuss behaviors and a partner that you need to look out for that might indicate you're more at risk or a friend of yours is more at risk, got a little announcement, okay? We are gonna do a contest. Yeah, it's a contest. And that contest is as follows. And it's also down in the description. Okay. Whoever shares this post in the most creative way and tag us on Instagram or other social media will win a $30 gift card to Amazon. Or if you're a Genshin fan, you'll get a $30 crystal top off. And my Genshin people know what I'm talking about. So however you decide to share this video, tag it and try to get creative with it. Okay, right then. Also, stick around because you're gonna be hearing from my buddy, Sophia, who is also a counselor. She's gonna be talking about safety plans, okay? So, you don't wanna miss that. All right, behaviors to look out for in a partner that might indicate you are at higher risk. Oh man, this is messy already. Well, it's Halloween makeup, so. Certainly hoping that it turns out better than the last time I did this. Anyway, so someone who has recently lost their job or in financial distress, people that lose their job suddenly can feel powerless, upset, angry, and may take it out on their partner. Just because your partner lost their job doesn't mean they're gonna turn abusive, but these are, again, just high risk factors. So just keep that in mind. And I think it goes without saying as I continue to list this stuff off that it does not apply to everyone, all right? So don't freak out. Another obvious sign is if the person has a history of violence. Now don't think for a second that you are an exception. So if your partner talks about past abuse or you know that person has charges, you definitely don't wanna ignore that. Which brings me to another high risk 
behavior, which is if they have been in prison recently or in the past. There are plenty of people that have been in jail that are not violent and would never harm someone. But if they have violent tendencies and they have been to jail for being that way in the past, you're probably at higher risk. Unfortunately, our prison system doesn't seem to do a whole lot for rehabilitation. And in fact, it might create issues that weren't there before that person went to jail. I think maybe I might have bit off more than I can chew with this. I'm not really sure exactly like what this is supposed to be, but I'm guessing like a vampire or a witch. I don't think it matters. I think I'm gonna say witch though. Yeah, I'm gonna go for that. Ooh, ooh, witch a woman. See how high she flies. Other signs, if the person has been reckless or impulsive in the past. Along with that, impulsivity is increasing impulsivity, okay? So if you notice that your partner is going over the top, maybe drinking and driving, maybe drinking more, or maybe they've had a history of high risk behaviors, okay? I am unfortunately, I think we're headed down the path, a dollar store version of the picture again. Expectation versus reality. All right, someone who stalks or harasses you, such as showing up to your work uninvited or home, for instance, or maybe even your friend's house. They might even try to get mutual friends to get you to talk to them, maybe even family to talk to you. They might make attempts to charm them or give them another side of the story that's completely false, try and paint you out to be the perpetrator or accusing you of being abusive. Ding! I think one of these days I just need to bite the bullet and invest in some decent makeup if I'm going to keep doing this. I'm thinking that maybe the colors are just not working that way because I'm not white. Now I got a couple more signs for you and then we're going to hear from Sophia. All right, so don't go anywhere, stay put. Another risk factor or sign is if they have tried to humiliate you or embarrass you in front of friends or family. Also, you want to observe their family dynamics. So if there's a history of violence in their family or even presently, or you witness some serious toxic behaviors or control and manipulation among family members, not a good sign. Just can't seem to pop out that red. It looks more brown. Is this red? Is this red or orange? Another thing to look out for is if they have threatened you or threatened someone you love. Or maybe they have implied it. Maybe they didn't come right out and say it, but it was implied. Could it be the shirt that I'm wearing? Do you think? No more excuses. Just like It just looks like crap. Oh, frick, man. Just realized I didn't have my mic on that whole last half. Maybe they have disclosed to you, maybe someone that knows has disclosed to you that they were violent in another relationship. Do not fool yourselves into thinking that they wouldn't do that to you, which is sometimes what happens, okay? So don't do that. Perhaps they were abused as a child. I'm gonna say it again. I know I said it earlier, but I'm gonna stress this. Just because you were abused as a child does not indicate that you are violent or aggressive or abusive now, okay? There are plenty of people out there that didn't turn out that way, all right? So calm down. So perhaps they have had some medical issues as well. They might be feeling powerless and try to gain power and control over their partner. All right, part of this is technique and part of this is the crappy makeup that I have. So probably more the fact that I don't know what I'm doing. All right, now as promised, we're gonna be hearing from Sophia shortly, but I got a few more things for you. And this goes out to friends and family. Please, please, please. Try to avoid giving the message that the person, the victim, is in any way responsible for what's going on or what's happened. Also, avoid minimizing the abuse. 
So just because they don't have a black eye or the ribs weren't broken, it doesn't mean that abuse isn't happening, okay? So if someone confides in you and tells you, hey, this is what's going on, please do not minimize what they're sharing with you, okay? Also, please avoid trying to help your friend or family understand the abuser. This is a waste of time and it's dangerous, okay? Because it can keep someone in a situation they don't need to be in because that person's trying to figure it out. And really, the only thing that needs to be figured out is if you're safe. And if you're not safe, you got to get the hell out of there. All right. Also, avoid encouraging your friend or family member to try to forgive the abuser. Okay. If a person's in that situation, you do not want to encourage that because they might stay. Well, I was told I have to forgive all the things. Wife's supposed to do that. Husband's supposed to do that. Partner's supposed to do that. No, forgiveness doesn't mean that you stick around. All right, doesn't matter if it's only happened once. All right, that's all it takes, okay? The most important thing is that person's safety. So we don't wanna excuse, we don't wanna minimize, we don't wanna blame, we don't wanna do anything that would encourage a person to stay in that situation. But all in all, if you ever feel like you are unsafe for any reason, you have to reach out for help. Now beyond that, if you are recognizing that you are in an abusive situation, or you fear that it will become violent or it already has become violent, then you need to have a safety plan. Which my girl Sophia is gonna talk to you about right now. So don't go anywhere, see the final look. I'm gonna clean this up as much as possible and do my lips and all things while we hear from Sophia. Yeah, so stick around, here she is. Hi everybody, Sophia here. Thank you Keisha for this awesome information. I'd like to pop in now with an important documents checklist. So if you decided and part of your safety plan is preparing to leave, here's some paperwork that is important to have with you before you do so. So one aspect would be identification. So make sure you have driver's license or state ID, birth certificate, a social security cards, as well as passport information might be helpful too. If you have children in this situation, make sure you have their birth certificates and some photos as well. When it comes to financial documents, make sure you do have paper money on hand. And if you do have credit cards under your name, make sure you have that as well. If you happen to have your own checking account and savings account, it'd be important to also have that information with you. As far as legal paperwork goes, so if there is a protective order in your situation, make sure you have a copy of it. If there is a custody or divorce agreement, making sure you have that with you as well. And if it applies, have a copy of the rental or lease agreement or house deed. A car registration and insurance paperwork is also important. Now, when it comes to your health, making sure you have your health insurance information, the health insurance information of your children, medical records. If it applies, even school records would be important. And then also if you do take medication or the children do as well, making sure you have the list of medication and the dosage, but also having people that has info on the prescription would also work. A very important thing to note, I know we do live in a world with, we have phones and devices, but sometimes, you know, we might not have that on hand with us or don't have easy access to the device right away. So just having written numbers or addresses of local resources or reliable friends or family members would be really helpful to have as part of important documents. Good luck with your journey and thank you for watching this video. We're hoping this information really helps you in your safety plan. Well, I hope that what Sophia had to share with you was helpful. Thanks, Sophia. Back to it. So I've somewhat recovered considering I don't know what the hell I'm doing. What do you think? Let me know. Doing this particular video was a real nightmare. So I feel like it was pretty fitting considering it's October and also domestic violence is really scary. So yeah, I hope that you got something out of it and make sure you stick around for other videos, subscribe and all the things. Okay. And if you need some more clarification on the contest, then check out the description down below. Okay. Follow on Instagram. We'll be having some announcements there as well. Thank you again, Sophia, for being here. And I hope you got something out of it. And until next time, be well, be strong, and be loved.